Brain scans showed changes of Havana U.S. Embassy workers after sonic attacks. Study claims. This is a warning to all your crickets. You can cause your own brain damage. Remember that Cuban sonic attack they were talking about? The United States government promoting that the Cubans were attacking the embassy workers? You know, there's a study out. And like all these studies, if you start looking and listening behind the woodshed, you start hearing how to look at all this stuff, what they're trying to tell you, what they're trying to get you to buy into. We have our first evidence that crickets that actually cause their own damage, apparently. Everyone will blame everything else, but they won't look inside. Advanced brain scans of U.S. Embassy employees in Havana who reported falling ill while having serving showed uh, ser uh, while serving showed uh, significant differences from a control group, according to the new study, University of Pennsylvania. The researchers said that the symptoms of what Trump described as a sonic attack may be reflected in the brain scans when compared with healthy research volunteers. Well, let's get on to the point. What's all this nonsense? What's the what's the symptoms that they suffered? They included headache, ringing in the ears, sleep disturbance, trouble thinking, memory problems, dizziness, and balance problems. The guy who reviewed the study says, well, the people that were uh, were affected reported concussions as well, nothing of which was in the control group. So the study shows us nothing. They do admit in this story that the remember that Gary L found that sound file, the Indies cricket. They actually say in the story that that's what they found was the actual cause, taking it away the sonic attack was the cricket attack that causes all these symptoms. Headache, ringing in the ears, sleep disturbances, trouble thinking. Folks, you have trouble thinking. You have memory problems, dizziness, balance problems. You got anything else going on? Muscle fatigue. And maybe you're being affected by your own cricketness. This is BTWRLM. 329 for those of you on aftercasts of whatever nature, whatever places we are. And I hope we're going to be staying connected now. I finally got the new antennas hooked up. So hopefully we won't have our thermal problem and hopefully it'll stay nice and tight like it has been before. And while I was off, uh, didn't know if I was going to get back here, get online this week uh, after that old antenna just failed on me right at the time I was before I had programmed these antennas. So it was a little bit of harrowing figure uh, experience trying to figure out how I was going to get these things programmed without most many much information. So anyway, I got finally clawed claw, clawed my way out, and here we are today. So if you have any problems, let me know. But I think uh, the connection at least should be good on the live for sure. And again, if you can hold off on the downloads at Spreaker until a couple of hours, so maybe five six hours, I appreciate it. That way I can get you a better file in case anything does go wrong. In particular, the sound, I'm not too happy with the sound that comes out during the broadcast, so I try to fix that a little bit of that up. And in particular, I guess for your FM guys or gals that are out there, there used to be a few. I haven't talked with many of them lately. So you get back to this story. We have, uh, remember, the United States government blamed the Cubans and found out apparently in this story, they admit they found that it was the cricket. So the sonic attack was the crickets making this sound that causes all these, these um, infirmities in people. And so you don't know you're going to cause this. So you can be a, cricket, a nation of crickets. Uh, it's no, no no question in my mind why we're so feeling so sick as well. But that's not the only cause. Maybe these people should have gone and found out whether or not they had been in the wilderness a bit. And boy, do these stories want to train you to get out of the out of the out of the nature. They were saying they want to say they protect it. Tick-borne Pawasan uh, virus spreads in the U.S. It's a new one that the CDC is trying to tell you, oh, and I don't deny that it's out there, but I found this interesting that the effects of this disease, the going a tick-borne disease, which is pretty serious, it'll kill you. They have got enough evidence to tell you that it'll kill you, and it, does, it has killed a couple people apparently, but it has a fever, headache, vomiting, generalized weakness, mental fatigue. It brings on uh, brain disorders. Sounds just like those uh, United States Embassy employees, doesn't it? Almost the same memory problems, almost the same effect. So, again, from effects, we nec not necessarily can do no cause, but it's always interesting to me how people will use, and this government use, and the officials use one set of parameters that which can be attacked generally across the whole 
the whole of the of any of, any, of our existence in a way, and that's the common thread. See, that's the, one of the things I look at here. It's not telling you that the Eastern United States is more prevalently going to be affected now by this new disease. It, that that may very well be there, and it probably is there. That's why they can test for it and remind you that to be careful, and that this is going to be a threat. But it's really more just finding things that people are engaging, and then using that against them. And we have to learn to look through it. Does that mean that it's uh, all fake? No, I've said that this is a very likely happening. Uh, the point is, is how is it being used? And in one regard, they will deny the nature is attacking people and can cause harm. In the other the regard, they can they'll tell you to kill you. So where, where do you drop in? You really have to start getting your knowledge uh, understood from sources that are more more trustable. And uh, so I just thought this was really hilarious in a way about the crickets causing all these uh, these problems and I'm looking listening looking at a nation of crickets and wondering why people wonder why they're not so healthy why we're not thinking so clearly I want to touch back again I didn't really finish I kind of ran out of time last week about this uh, problem with the journalism the press the attack at the borders I want to touch more on uh, a bit on this Another sickness in this country, and I don't know why we haven't figured out how to address it. In fact, I had to just start kicking out. There's so much to, as we say periodically and we show, and lots of uh, hosts will tell you, the news is just rep repetitious. Even to myself with the notice, it's just, rep it's, again, it's the same stories, it's all the same notice, and how much, how many times are you going to listen to me repeat it? Well, you've heard me say it quite a bit, and it takes quite a bit, but at some point I'm even getting tired of talking about all all the stuff that's there to give you a notice of uh, for and it also uh, remember there's always a subtlety too what we're being told even by people that we trust may not be accurate uh, when we uh, like I look through the idea when someone says that oh this is a constitutional violation my first it's not even a hesitation anymore what if what if there's no constitution what if you're imposing something on a system that doesn't exist anymore does it am I saying that it doesn't exist well I said last week it's in you but that's not conveyed in these documents that talk about, I don't even know where to go, there's so many this week about people making assumptions that they, they appear to be per correct on their surface. They are correct on the basic idea, but they're talking from a presumption of, a, of an existence of an organizational structure, an establishment, a thing, a condition that just doesn't exist anymore. At least in practice, and that's the problem. I mean, that's, again, that's you got to get it working. If it's not working, again, what's not doing What's not doing maybe is an indication. And when you're not doing, it's an indication, at least. And likely, if you're not doing in a place that there's someone that wants to invade, uh, you're being taken down. And so we, I see lots of writings talking about the generalities of everything. They talk in, abs um, in generalities, in encompassing generalities. You've got to be careful about that, even from the good guys that are writing, trying to expose you to all this. Now, I don't think anything is, is so overwhelmingly generalize so much that you can say in any particular case that one condition is the fact of it and that means that you have to look in and see where it might not be because there's nothing so complete other than factual things and I guess you all even have arguments on this one but you know in the morning I look up and there's a sun coming up and in the evening relative to my clock I see a sun going down now, I guess we could be philosophical about what we see, but every day that's pretty much a fact. How we re interact with that environment, that's a totally open, open-ended open problem. And so I've, I've all these tabs I threw down, I didn't even want to, I just looked at them and said, well, I could talk about all these aspects, but I just wonder how much people are really still listening and, and, and doing. And, and then there's some of you that do, so I, that's why I keep coming back. The, the few of you that do are uh, an inspiration a bit. Because I know that we're still, again, it's that little bit that this still keeps hanging on. You're still interested to keep hanging on. There's something that's amiss. You, you listen that, oh, there's a constitutional violation, and you know the violation. I, I'm, the subtlety is that violation is in you to be upheld that's not being. And the problem is we don't translate to the fact that it's not being to be stopped, and we don't stop it. So we can talk about, in the concepting of putting a... Like using the term everyone, that's one of these generalities. Everyone does this. Well, that's not true. So when you see the generality applied in that regard in things, 
I believe, and it, it's easy to do, and it's happened to my mind when I'm looking through, i got so many things that are more important than other things. I kind of categorize those generalities and well, everybody's being affected this way. And I just accept it. But that's not the truth. And so when you focus in on certain things, that's why I say find something that's a wrong that you want to make right. However you, you believe it can be done at this point, whatever is being violated to cause it to be that way. But focus in on that because that starts to throw away. You can't speak in terms of everyone anymore and others. You speak with in regard to you and the thing that you're looking to fix. And it's not in black and white generality terms like everyone is affected or what a fake everything's fake or what is a, a couple other ones uh, well even the generalities that all government's bad i mean i sit here to look at like mining districts it's not every government was bad if you look at how mining districts worked they, they were more in the capacity of what i think the libertine mind says it was just a bunch of property owners got together to protect themselves amongst themselves, which was an interesting thing from my insight when I started understanding that, and from outside invasion, like attorneys, who diminish their property for, for money. And so we can see a model, uh, if we need models, we can see a model that uh, gives us a basics to start from. And so for me, because I can't throw the whole, the whole of the system out, and I'm not going to defeat it on my own, I can work amongst a bunch of other people that are relatively brain damaged, it appears to me, but when you look at all these symptoms that were given that happened to people. And uh, we have to work through all that problem, but we still have to get to a place where our expectations can be met. And I don't mean our expectations by any, any amount of uh, uh, unstandardized uh, uh, view. Uh, we have to live amongst ourselves, and that's what these laws really are. If people look what the laws are instead of complaining about them. They were the... They were when something went wrong, not when things are going right. They don't apply when things go right, and this is the thing I don't get. I don't why people don't. I don't get why people don't understand this. It's when things go wrong. What was the level of the wrong that someone becomes held accountable? In the concept that everybody is in a in this in this establishment for law to work is given this due thing, something called due process. It's notice of what the extremity is. Don't go past here, because societally, that causes harm generally. Now, we are into generalities, but it's always on specifics, right? So this is about those elements. And so we can't, I've, learned, I've seen lots of people coming out, writing about generalities, pigeonholing lots of stuff out there, and it's just not the way this thing works. So, and I'm, I just see the very concept of government is bad, Therefore, every government is bad. Well, okay, you can put yourself into that mindset. I need to live in the world. I need to be able to function amongst the world. And the world on its own does not function without some constraints. And you can't hold anybody accountable. You think you do, but if you're going to give libertine uh, ideas to people, then you give them the right to do whatever they want, and then you suffer the consequence. There's a whole lot more behind this discussion. It's been ages and ages old with people that weren't, that weren't mind, mind control, weren't mind damaged, weren't constrained, uh, that we are so far from that, it's just astonishing. But, no, we have to have self-government. You're organized. You have organs. That is a, a, a government. It's an organized, your organs in your own body. You, you, our society mimics us ourselves. And so we can't divorce that so quickly. We have what we call self-government. And it is where we have our own set of rules, well, however they are. And that's the problem. Each one of us had our own libertine ideas, and some people went to the extent where they said, I can take yours. And somebody else said, no, we're not going to. So then you live in the world where you're always under threat of someone coming and taking your stuff. And people got tired of that. And they said, okay, well, we're, this is how we're going to work that out. We're going to establish an impartial forum that we will go, when we have problems amongst, amongst ourselves, when someone trespasses, We'll go there to get the societal discussion going on how we're going to revolve, dissolve, resolve all of this. We don't have that word being government. It happened in the mining districts. They, they had problems amongst themselves, and they resolved to come together so they could come together impartially. And I don't, so I don't know what... Um, why we go to this this point about not having government. We have to have self-government. 
And if we don't have the self-government, then we don't have an extension. We don't have the extension that says, how do we go out and we deal with other people? And I see lots of libertine minds that, that would say, uh, we leave it up to arbitration. Well, that's the system that, that's the, what the system is that they have. That's been the problem. You removed yourself from the system that was working. And you didn't insist upon it. And what we went into, we went into what I keep talking about, which was, which is what? The thing that everyone complains about. So I don't, anyway, I don't know what the, uh, the, the blanket, the, the all government's bad. It, it, no, it, it's not bad when you start considering that we're not good. And what we've done is that was the inability of, uh, how we resolve things in, in, in as we live together. And I don't know what else to say to, to that. I, uh, we could, we could abandon all that or we can understand that there's certain, there's, we're here for us uh, on a certain basis. And if, if we're not able to resolve that, we're going to, we fall into that lesser status. So I don't I don't know what more to address on that. It seems interesting to me that we won't look at our self-government and then we won't extend that out as a fractal, and which we already have as a society, but we deny it. So, and I'm noticing I have some hookup problems for you all. I'm looking at it right now, and I am hooked up. I don't know why it cut out. It's um, running seemingly fine right now, so you should be hearing me in a moment. And again, like I said, if you'll not not download the file, I'll pick up uh, the file and I'll fix it, and I'll I'll give it to you hours after uh, on the Spreaker for those of you that can't wait to wait can't wait to get it from there. But uh, when you get it up on YouTube, it'll be fine. Don't don't worry about that. So apologize for this. I don't know why it's still hooked up. I'm looking right at it right now as I see it. Thank you for the chat for giving me the heads up. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but there's no reason why it should be cutting out. And I, this is the problem about understanding part of the problem uh, with what's going on with all this digital technology. It's interesting, but it's not like touching a knob. It's not like turning a, a, a watching a light turn on and off. It's all doing this stuff by magic, and this is another problem. We get system, we develop systems that are beyond our ability to keep up with it, and then we just give up. We just say, just give up. We give over to this condition. Well, this establishment of the government I talk about was set up to try to fix a bunch of the ills of the history of man. It wasn't perfect, obviously, but it gave us a much better start. And then I got into the the, the land law, and I got into what, what the property disposals were relative to the government. And the government is not supposed to be something that comes in and takes your stuff. That it has been is our problem. That we've allowed it is our problem. How we get it back, boy, that's going to be another uh, bunch of information and discussion we'll probably never have because we never get together in a society. All these systems we have that we use for social, so-called social media are made to divide us. And no matter how much you, you, you try to discuss with people, you'll be dismissed. Again, I look at this broadcast, I don't know. And I only do this based on relevant, uh, on the thing on what we get accomplished. What I tell you here and what we get accomplished, me and my colleagues, and there's only a handful of us, but what we get accomplished. And when we get stuff accomplished, I believe, to tell you, I can tell you with absolute confidence, not misplaced confidence, but stuff that actually works. When I'm telling you to do things, because they're reflecting what we do and accomplish that works, and no one listens to that, I realize we have a serious societal problem. And so my gripe is that that point. If the society wants to go where it's going to go, what who am I anyway? And it doesn't matter who, what libertine idea is going to be, that thing is coming on you. And all I can see is when I reduce it down to self-government and then the fractal society of all other self-governments, which is every one of you, having to work together, and not when it goes good. We don't care. When it goes good, everybody's happy. When it's not going good, there has to be a baseline of where no good is so that we can at least, I guess, morally hold people to account. Otherwise, you have no standard. 
And then you start, and then you start seeing the lack of standard, like in the pedophilia stuff today. You just see that there's no standard. People have been playing the game. You, you, you don't look very deep to find out. But I didn't know about it until a long time back, and I told you about my documentary and what happened to me. Like I said, I say, feel pretty fortunate, maybe even to be here a bit relative to that. But we say the the Clinton card wasn't wasn't used by the by the attorneys, the prosecutors in the Epstein thing. I was surprised at that because that would have allowed them to hold him for his own safety. And then you heard what happens when he gets inside and uh, almost breaks his neck, right? You know, the Clinton card almost got put on him, all right? So this is the story about how this works. But So you gotta, you do have to be careful. When you lived in a society where that was the point, and that was the continuation of problems, You, it, that's, now it, I notice it's necessarily on us to have stopped it, and we didn't. And it, now it's become such a big problem that I don't know if we can't get together that we can. That said, I'm still here every week to come and tell people, here's what the th the underlying principles, the things in the news that are noticed, that if you're interested in that subject matter, uh, start approaching it this way. No, we don't use our guns. There's not enough of us organized to do it, and if we wanted to, we're not going to rally up enough. It's not going to work. That's a, yeah, we have the right, but maybe uh, we have to be a lot more intelligent about this. So for me, that wasn't really an option. Yes, it's there, but it's not really the actual option. And I look around, and I try to get people, more than a, a handful of people to listen to the broadcast to try and get us on a better path so we can set up the record at least to be able to move into the next step if we can get enough people at that point to be uh, agreeable. And we can't even get that. And then I hear people talking about the Second Amendment. It's really nonsense. We're not integrated enough to do that. We're not knowledgeable. No, we're all cricket. We're, we're suffering the effects of sonic cricket attacks, our own attack on ourselves. The Cuba story was just cracking me up. So we have to get back uh, with ourselves and say, okay, let, let's reanalyze this whole condition. The place has gone to, to he heck in a handbasket, and uh, it was really up to us, the republic, if you can keep it. And I'm not too solid on that republic because you can have all kinds of republics. But we reduce it down to the law of the land, the fact that the peasants got the land as against the government itself and protected. That was a big deal in the human, uh, so-called human evolution. That was in man's uh, condition in the world. And to me, that becomes a place, again, the objective basis. Otherwise, we are on sand. Everywhere we look, we'll be on sand. I just don't, no one's talked to me or brought me a better position than the solid land, if you will, uh, the, the rock to stand on. Everything else becomes sand and opinion. And in some regard, it's irrelevant relative to government. We either have an integration of understanding for ourselves, and then what we actually have, and a realization we are not the islands. And if we are islands, we're all standing shoulder to shoulder in these places. And that uh, we're not nice necessarily. You and you, listeners, you and I, we might be the nicest people in the world. We could tolerate the most nonsense in the world and live next to it and all that. But, you know, that's not the rest of the world. And the rest of the world is what drives all these things. And then people took advantage of that. Now it's so obscured, I don't even think if people can recognize it. Why? I keep going back to the law of the land, not in the Article 6 of the Constitution of the United States. And, and there's another reason why you don't. What if that doesn't exist? And then you're already, you're, 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 pipe, you're singing a pipe dream to begin with. What about the land on, underneath my feet? That's tangible. Okay, without getting into the philosophical, what am I standing on? Oh, it's just a bunch of electron charge. Okay, fine. I don't want to get into that. I don't deal, my mind doesn't have to deal with that when I wake up and put my foot down in the morning from the bed and walk around and have to go do my things. So that's not a, that's, that's a resolution I don't have to deal with. Well, I talked to you about this quantum stuff. It just happens to be us working on better resolutions for our, the material that we understand in this world, not the stuff we don't understand. We'll never find that that way. Anyway, getting back to the, uh, getting back to this thing. Far off the plath on the question. See, just answering a question. I can't even look at the, <laughs> look at the chat. Uh, at any rate, so I, for right now, am am consigned to the idea we have a, a our property. We're organized. We have organs. Government is organized. It has organs. It's a fractal of us. It's our if it's an extension of us where we each do not have the power to affect to actually work on somebody else or be worked uh, stop being worked on and that but in the in the basic sense that these so these laws that we say are laws aren't really supposed to be the bludgeon being used by government it's the notice to all all of us 
of what the lowest standard of agreement is but when a, something does become the violation. And then there was supposed to be this, this government was the impartial body to protect all that. Protect uh, everybody in a neutral capacity so that you don't have what comes out to be vigilantes. So this is a, people, they don't understand uh, uh, why people divorce themselves from why we even got here, how we, and how it fell off the track, but why we even develop what we call government. No, we respond to the, the effects of how it failed and not how it, how it's supposed to work. And until, uh, again, there's no Second Amendment that is going to protect me. There's no sense Second Amendment is going to tip, protect a, a small band of renegades. Okay, it's just not going to happen. And so I've looked at the pragmatic part of that and said, well, what else do we get to do? I mean, literally, put yourself in the mindset. You can put yourself in any category, any possibility, put yourself in any terrain, and then think your way out of it. I'm in a war zone. Think you're what you're. Na I told you, you're naked in the middle of a, a, a field and in a war. What are you going to do? You have to prevail. You're naked in a field without cover, and they're looking at you. Now, how do you how do you do something? You're in a prison. How do you how do you get out without? You know, if you get caught doing the wrong thing, you could be really punished. All right. Well, just look up real quick and see sinking sand. We uh, predict, pretend you're in a uh, your your environment. Your, the society is a quicksand. You found yourself stumbled into it. Now what? How do you get out? I mean, these are the kinds of things we're in trouble. How do we get out? I don't have the only answer. I have what we find we work with that works to hand you to say let's try that better because doing nothing's not going to work, and doing it wrong certainly doesn't work. So I, I don't want to, I don't hope no one thinks I come here to give you, this is the answer. It is a way to get through until we can get together again to figure out how we want this place to be really functioning in the face of this disaster that's been happening. And yes, we've seen some but good work come back. And really all it's been is reinstituting what's in that called the black and white. That Everything that people say, oh, there's no government, no laws. Yeah, there's a law if you want it to be there. Otherwise, someone's going to not care and, and, and have no limit against you. And I found, because having to do in the mining law, where we have claims and the government comes against us, and we have very clear line of the violation, I can only, folks, I can only tell you, you'll never know this, I can only tell you, for everybody else that's not in a, on a claim around us, and for everyone else that's around us that uh, might be there, that has fi may have filed notices of intent, they don't come after us. The government doesn't come after us. And we've, we're in a place they want to take away from you all. Uh, I mean, talking our claim they're not going to take, but the area around it. They want to withdraw all of that stuff from you all, from whatever entry you want to do. And yet, they have not been able to stop us. Why? Because there's black and white limitation. The law that no one understands is sitting there against the government itself, the agents of government. And not just government. There's people that try to come in periodically, and they try to in invade the, the, the claim that we have. And I'm not talking we make a claim in a frivolous manner. No, this is a very substantial land possession. It's a grant to us. Me and my co-owner. And we've had periodically people want to claim over. There's laws. If we didn't have the laws, we wouldn't have a standard to protect ourselves. There's a threat against them even. If we, if they do, we can move to the, even the, the corrupted government condition in the courts. But you've heard even that has to be adjusted. I said, I bring to you behind the woodshed knowledge of different ways of approach that to my mind, I've never really seen, not that they're made up, but the point is that they are made up within the law. They are utilizing law, uh, objective black and white, that the authorities can't deny. And that takes them out of the interference. So remember, even if you have a, a, a right against the government, you can show it. I'm talking maybe now in patent stuff in your land. Uh, for the, Some of you renters could go to, to this if you knew how to get through your, your agreements your rental contracts. So I'm talking to everybody in some regard that uh, if you given that there's a uh, land uh, there's a rights against government interference uh, and they're pretty they're relative they're, I think they're absolute they're ultimately absolute then you have a powerful tool even against the judges of government. And why 
when I, well, so far off my tabs, I just think about this. Why it became so important years ago, I identified a jurisdictional limitation on the, on the, uh, on the judiciary against patent land. And I, I found that years ago, and then I lost it because I, I went on to some other thought studies. It wasn't important, but then I, I always remembered it was there. It took me years. Once I found out about the mining law, it took me years to go find that again, and I finally found it. I didn't find it where I thought it was, probably why I didn't see it. But there is a legislative uh, enactment that says the judiciary cannot interfere with these properties. That is your separation. So a judge has no power to interfere with that. And you don't know that. You allow them to interfere. Now, I can apply that directly to our uh, to our mining claim. Why? Because they're as patent. They're a disposal with an informal disposal. They have the same power. That's why I became so interested in all this. We have. If you want to, you can you can complain about the government not do anything. You can complain that there's justice. But when you can assert that there's the code that the government has to follow against it, its own enactments, you've now found the limitation. If you aren't willing to go look for that or use it, you haven't found any limitation, so the government looks like a big trespasser, which it's going to be. You, you know that. You complain about the fact of it. You quote all the quotes about government being a trespasser and going to be doing harm. What, did, what Washington told us, something about a fearful master. Yeah, yeah, you let it go there. But when you assert down the limitation that is existent in this black and white, we call the law, the limitation against the government and everyone else, all of a sudden you're sitting in a place that you were promised, if you will, if the, if the promise fulfilled. Then it's an easy task to see whoever's doing it is contrary to the objective basis, which you are denial denying uh, because you won't use it. And then that is what I'm saying. When it goes wrong, that standard kicks into gear. When it's going right, who cares? Right? I mean, this is the thing about contracts. Peachy keen until it goes wrong, and then you need to go to that law. That's the law of the contract. You have to go to that black and white to see what the relative rights of the parties were, whatever, whatever the condition is, the issue, the, the problem to be decided. And then you take that to whoever could be the arbiter. In the private context of the contract, you can take it, you can agree to take it to the guy down the street. But in the more, more formal sense, where the government is actually having to sit with its records objectively, like this patent stuff, where it's recorded in the county, it has to have a formal process to be able to look through all this, to apply these these lines in the in the uh, in the foundation that have been trespassed, the thresholds of this, if you will, that are been wrongly. There's a line in black and white that says that was that was exceeded, and the, because it was written, that was the uh, uh, the trespassers notice of that limit, and they still exceeded it. Now we get the essence of crime coming on because now we're doing it with intention and knowledge. The two things are required for every criminal complaint which is what I tell you to convert all your tri civil trespasses to, isn't it? All this is tied together if you just hold it in, in there, quit denying government and reality and say, okay, even for as bad as it is, we can still go through and we can make a better path for ourselves and start becoming that example to everybody. It's not all fallen. There's just things we stop picking up and carrying with us or resorting to when the time came. Or telegraphing how we do how we would do that. How do I get people into knowing intent? I say, here it is. There's the black and white. You were honor bound to con to follow to derelict in your in your failure. Now we got another problem. And here that's here's your notice of that. They take one step further. You got them in knowing intent. That's crime now. Then you go look for that black and white statute in the government you condemn. If you haven't done that, then are they constrained? No, uh, I don't know what the question is now. I don't know what your complaint really is if you haven't done that. Why I'm over to this talking, I'm just amazed. But at any rate, here I am. Here we are talking about this. See what you did, Grimner? I just think about that. Where did I get this? This came from the question about not government. It, we're, we're responding to bad uh, things that happened bad to a government institution, establishment, that was supposed to solve problems, and we let that go. So I guess that's what I'm responding to here. And how how is it now? We're in this such bad, uh, dire straits. We come off the rock and roll, uh, blues and rock and roll, Grimner plays. 
dire straits, we come off of that, we come into that problem, and it was really up to us to hold. And I'm looking and saying, well, there's really, except for the corruption that's seeped into the system, I can hold that at bay with this couple of black and white statutes. Then we have the criminal element of that. That's different. And so, I guess, it's, it's, and that's a subtle, hard thing that people don't understand. That's a different thing that's going to be requiring a different amount of pressure. Because those that's the condition where you're, you're simply walking out, uh, you going into, if you will, an ana uh, analogy, you walking into a bank and out comes a, a bank robber and his gang, and, and you see the crime, but what are you going to do about it? Right? That's that problem. But but the, what we're talking about that gang the the gang banger is the govern is the officials in government, and I'm not going to say everyone. Although I can't find anyone, I'm not going to necessarily put in my mind everyone. And and, and why is because I don't want to get is that the word cynical? I don't want to get into the place. It might be, but I don't want to put my mind frame and my approach into a servitude of the harm everywhere. See, that's the trap. That means you're condemning everyone. And now we might be condemnable, but I'm not, I myself will not, I'll be looking for the, the one, the, the needle in the haystack if I have to. And I think that we make, we're better for it if we, we continue. So, at any rate, uh, we have to make a standard. Choose what that is. Understand that most standards I see have been loose sand. Uh, to me, it became the foundation, the rock, became the mining law, literally. And from there, I could that actually start rethinking better about how this was supposed to all work. That I didn't go to the path of throwing it all over the edge, saying it just doesn't exist, and, and so therefore there's no reason. In fact, what I got into required that I start making those bright, lines of limitation. And when you I just say, when I the things I tell you are things that we do and we work. We the the my network uh, to the one that was nationally recognized by the government in Washington DC for the work that's being done relative to proper forest management, wildfire smoke and a couple of other things. That work that was being done over 5 years didn't get there cuz we're not doing it correctly. It's now being recognized. It's still a lot more work. It's still not done. But the basis for how to get things done more properly is being laid and now recognized. That's, uh, this is the part of the subtle problem. You're doing a lot of reworking the foundation here. And to do that, you have to know, anybody who does construction knows to lay your foundation. You, in fact, you have to lay the base for the foundation. You've got to make sure that's solid. You know, there's quite a bit of work, prep work, to, be, to do a building, to, to make something on the ground. And then there's always the nature. You've got to be working with that other reality as well. It's the reality that's going on, not your making up of it. I mean, essentially, that's the government. That's, your, that's the that's the the thing that you that will that has the power to hurt you. Is is nature? That's the government. But amongst ourselves, we have this social thing, and you need to correlate your thoughts relative to. It's like jurisdictions. Don't commingle these jurisdictions. Don't take your your, your observations of what ought to be done and throw it on something that wasn't maintained. You know, it ought to be a new car. <laughs> yeah, it ought to be a new car, but is it? I anyway, so let me get back. I wanted to get back because I didn't want to actually spend this much time on this kind of thing, except that what I just talked to you about for the last, what, 40 minutes is very important basis for how you integrate with what's going on around you. you know, people will excuse away this thing. People will just accept into the fact of certain impositions on them at the same time complaining about the thing that's opposing them or going contrary to them or the servitude they're in or they just give into it. And nobody, it seems, takes even the smallest steps to start working themselves through. And I've told you, now that I've been through a lot of what I've done, uh, let's say, let's go over to uh, driver's license, for instance. 
I'm in the mind right now. That it actually doesn't bother me one way or the other, but it, it just the approach. It is not a limitation if you have a, a driver's license to start to work to make a record that says that to have it was actually a, an extortion and a coercion on you. It's not just the assert, looking at some thousand cases that I see coming over. All those cases have been around since the ni middle 90s, since I know about them. All these Supreme Court cases that supposedly talk about how you have a right to drive. Just toss all those. It has nothing really to do with all that. There's no court that's going to recognize that. As soon as they rec didn't recognize it, it was done. It was over. Stop it. Just know it's there, but you listen behind the woodshed, you hear actually where the, where the property right is, the ingress and egress, is to you. And I don't know of anybody that addresses that, and the ones that I do know, yours truly, get silent. They get the good crickets answering back from the government when you propose it correctly. That's another problem. That's that, that criminal problem. So uh, you, you can't just toss all your thoughts about oh, the, the ineffectuality and all this other stuff. You have to break this down into uh, ascertainable chunks and jurisdictionals and authorities. And when you add new elements, that moves it into a new potential, whether, whether or not you can solve it. And this is the process that we have. Again, we're in the stinking abyss, sliding in. We have to literally claw ourselves out. And we may have to do it like I was trying to do the programming of the antennas without much knowledge. Just looking and calming down and look, asking the right questions, look at the response, do something else, keep plugging away. I mean, going into that, I'd, almost like a traumatization for me This uh, that it happened the way, uh, everything that happened here in the middle of the week uh, just was backwards. You know, all I could remind myself was, remember I told you at the beginning of the year, this is the year of Dijin. I kept telling myself that. That everything laid out so weird about in my getting in my way to get things accomplished. I said, no, I'm dealing with the gin. I'm just going to keep pressing and keep focusing and keep doing what I do to solve a problem. And I'm here with you today, even though we've had a little bit of trouble, apparently. I don't, uh, I haven't seen, we're still on, so I guess everything's still okay. Uh, but uh, we had a little bit of problem. I don't know what that is, but I'm on. I'm on to talk to you today, uh, which didn't wasn't looking so good. But again, I've just kept applying what I tell you. Uh, in in the digital realm, I uh, applied what I what I tell you to do, what we do in the in the world against people that are trespassers that happen to be in costumes of government authority. In fact, I keep telling you, those in government authority are the easiest ones to get into knowledge and intent or crime. And when I start seeing how simple that was, now the next part is notwithstanding. You may not be able to do anything immediately about that because there's just now the new knowledge about it, but I could still get them in that capacity. And they're not so willing to strike out at you when they got a couple of marks on them. Mark on the BC at protonmail.com. All right, they're not, you get the marks on them, and they, again, that's the notice of intent, isn't it? So, I'm, my, my the co owner of my other claim and myself are uh, like this anomaly where we are in the, in a, in an area, we just got some new knowledge too. The area that we were in was up for a withdrawal. So they won us out. And we had a lot of people coming after us and trying to make it difficult on us. And I, doing the research and allying, going to the black and white and laying it out in a document, it ended up being 21 pages. I didn't leave any stone unturned. You know, being a miner, I guess that's what I do. I didn't leave a stone unturned. I put it into, into a document that laid out the black and white law, and they trespassed every bit of it, breached every bit of it, derelict in all of it, see three different statuses there, and named it and put it down, and they haven't touched us and can't touch us. No, they can touch us if they're the criminal. And that's their problem. And again, just uh, maybe you don't understand what I just said. Maybe you do get it. But if you don't agree with the position I'm taking, you'll not really be able to become effective to put the limits at least in record back on those that are just beating us down at every turn, at least that I see. And so this is getting back. Maybe I can get there now. This is why I was doing the analysis of the journalists. You know, you all say that you have a, a right, the right of the press, if you will. You have the right of free speech and all that. And then you get on the t social Twitter, you see how it's all conditioned. So what's that? That's not really free speech either. But see, you get locked in that, you're not going to do it against the guy at the government, right? In fact, you're going to go, you're going to go ask them for help. 
And this is the other thing. It's how they treat us, how they get going is pretty, how they get us going is really kind of a phenomenal uh, insight into our failures. And this is our problem. See, there's no limit on how they can mistreat us here. And as long as you keep it in that realm, there's no limit you can bring. This is the whole problem, is what I've been talking about today. And as I said, I forgot to mention the email. I have uh, at least one emailer. I guess we're having a little bit of trouble. And if you're listening, I think our last subject was still testing. I stand, I did send two emails and there's no response. So if you're, you, there's an intimation of a potential problem on the other end. I just want you to know I'm not not listening and not watching. I'm not getting anything, and so I'm not too free to send more stuff out. And I would prefer to use the Proton Mail for if you're still on listening and, and don't wonder why I'm not responding. In fact, any of you, like a couple of you, send emails, don't respond. That's cool. I get that, and I, I won't. And it's okay. We got we got things working, and we're more busy to do other things. I don't need to type on an email. But for those of us still getting connected or we have trouble. I don't know what our problem might be. This last one, we're trying to test a problem. It's not really working out. So I just want you to know I've got two emails out if you're listening. And maybe look for that and figure out a way to, what we work, I still need to communicate with you. You got a, you got a question or you have a thing you want to do. I want to get you on the path to, to get that done. Go get back over to this. So we get that to this journalist. We have the rights of the press and all this, but you see that there's a, an, an intrusion. And I offer uh, things that I have come across that seem to work, a record being made. This journalist story came through a journalist who uh, was violated by the Border Patrol. I'm not interested in all that myself. I'm interested in how he was treated. I'm interested in what the policing, that the government, the military, is now doing, notwithstanding what you think ought to be. And for me, without a, no, with nobody in this capacity asserting the black and white limit, you're getting absolutely no limit. That said, you get into a military consequence, you have to deal with mil government necessity. And I told you they were going to run there. I told you there years ago. They're going to run there. They had already actually done it with the Patriot Act, but no one paid attention to that. And I said, so I've been telling you, you have to defeat that provision and be not, it's not something you can just blurt out. You, you build into your investigative report and in your responses to elicit more investigative response from the criminal, you build in that condition that it's actually in necessity and you have to respond through that to defeat it. And I've told you there's a couple ways to, to attempt it. And I say attempt because since not many are doing it, I don't really have a feedback of the quality of that. I can suggest to you that when we go through the mining law, see, this is very interesting when you start to look at this. The mining law is in national security. I can put that right in their face. I talk to you, those of you with patent or rent to patent land or assignees, if you go back to the chain of title, you see you have access to that assignee or heir of a patent. Right in there is forever you're forever going to be protected in this in this ulti with this ultimate evidence. And then I ask you to go. I ask you to go look at sabotage. If they mess with my chickens on my land. That's that's national security sabotage. So if you were listening carefully, and now I'm putting a little bit of it together for you, you can at least start making the record communication of the authority that's being brought under color of the authority of national security to defeat national security. You can at least make that statement. That's what we make. I say you, you, you're making decisions that are interfering with our ability to supply and protect the national security when you interfere with min minerals production. Why do I say that? It's because there's a law, a limit, that they're not supposed to trespass that they are. If I didn't have that law, I couldn't respond to it. They have nothing there. This is the power at some level. It's that they use this power against you. No one, t no one understands how this works. They use the power against you, but you don't know how to not bring yourself liable to it. Again, this is a juris confined jurisdictional authorities. What, why is it that the most district, United States district courts do not have jurisdiction? Why? Why do are only two of the all the federal courts you see? Why are only two in statute in the black and white? Why are they the only constitutional courts? Why? So if you toss all this government out, 
you toss out your limits. You toss out how you identify there being criminals to you. You toss out your ability to give notice to others that it's going on. And we, at that point, when you can do that, it's there's nobody that can look in and and cause an opinion to happen. That's why I don't I don't have much. I'm losing my. Uh, what my, I don't even know what the, the word is. What's the word? Uh, it didn't come to me. I'm losing it, folks. I'm losing the fact of uh, being tolerant of this uh, factual basis that can be established that people deny and then challenge with no basis whatsoever. And then try to claim to me their future is a better uh, way to go uh, or that they're, uh, they're indifferent to what is being, they're being told. It's really nonsense what we, what we create for ourselves. But getting back to the, how you really lay it out, you go to those laws if, that's why I say if there's no law, there's no limit. Until you put the law that says you can't, and this is one of the things that may come up if I ever get to my tabs, was this limit that people are being killed by the cops and more and more stories about it. You literally have to go in and say, you take away the question by inserting the fact. Let's say they, you put in the policy the cops cannot shoot someone until they're shot at. Now, there's been a push past that, but you put it back in the, the legislative side. And you give people a standard. You fight over that line. That you can't have cops just telling someone to drop a gun and, and shoot them in two seconds. Not even three seconds. Not even 15 seconds. See, you have to now write down the limit that's in the law for the government to follow. Because without one, they have no accountability at all at all, notwithstanding their immunities that are extended to them, which should have told you something about how far this thing went. But, and, and so where, where did this fit, finish that idea? Where do you put the line? Well, folks, if you look, everyone has a right to bear arms. The story I'm responding to in my mind that just popped up was a homeless guy a couple of years ago got gunned down by a SWAT team. Uh, he was a sleeping a homeless between two buildings, I think, if the picture was correct. I don't know. Uh, didn't leap, read that close, but he was gunned down dead, shot dead, while he was laying down because they said he, he responded by getting up and they saw a gun and they shot him before he could even move. He was groggy and whatever. Well, there was no evidence that, that the guy ever pointed the gun. And so there it is, see, folks. You have to go back into those places. And you, I think this was in Oakland. Uh, remember, all the, all the people that die in Oakland. But you have to go in there and write the black and white line that makes it certain where the line is. No, everyone has the right to bear arms. You can't just shoot somebody. And there has to be evidence that he was pointing the gun at you. Now, and you add the uh, inclusion. And if you lie about the gun, was shooting, then you go into ex 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 aggravated murder or whatever the charge. You go look and study what that is and then bring that as a rule, a certain rule. I told you without these fine lines, uh, they can trespass everywhere. It's good, and I told you it's going to be up to us to now bring the, even the most dumbest things forward in order to protect us. It's just no other protection at this point. Now, there's other ways at it, but it takes too many more people, so I don't have, I can't cover, I can't help cover that with you on the, on the, on the, on the broadcast. There's lots of work that actually has to be done. Without all the work, we're going to see the, the nonsense, the crime uh, professing itself as government, which we're responding to is, no government's good. I get that. I get all that. I mean, that's the thing. I see quite, quite a, enough, uh, quite a bit that I don't even want to talk to. It starts bringing up such an ignorance of the history of how we're here. I don't even want to talk about it no more. It's up to you all to go read about that. Why are we even here? Why do we dis why do I get suggestions that dismiss that? And when you don't dismiss it, you start realizing most people are talking like bringing up old stuff that never, that didn't work. Why we're here. One of the, for us, I mean, in the mining law, one of the things is the royalties. These idiots, uh, these criminals, social communism, know, the technocrat, whatever they want to call them, these sustainable jerks and crime criminals. They bring up, oh, it's, mining law is an antiquated law. We need royalties. This is the, one of the main, one of these main things that they'll come out and talk about. And if you go back in, anybody would just go back and look, you'd find out that royalties are more antiquated than the mining law, and the reason why we have the, the mining law, because royalties failed utterly. So without bringing up the how we got here, you uh, propose uh, absurd things, and criminal things, actually, when you get down to understanding the more basic of it. And that goes completely out without further note to everybody. Well, until you find someone like myself, when 
I'm talking about something that literally happened on Twitter. This representative, a pretty powerful guy in the government, uh, con con the Congress critters, uh, the, the, the criminals in D.C., a uh, pretty powerful guy, is, is one of the guys pushing this. When I saw his words, I said, he's tied into the Consensus Policy Network. Sure enough, you go do the background. You see, just, see just a new iteration of what happened, uh, w w the sustainable thing that sustains itself through new people. It's all the, the, same, the same stuff. And no one puts the limit, so they continue. And your life goes down the tube, so you blame the government. And what it was, it's one idiot in Arizona who, who persuaded other people to buy into antiquated, failed, con failed standards. And then, so, uh, what do I say? I mean, I, I have this glimpse of what's happening. It's really e easily, see, I had to slow down, Vince, fixed. But it's going to take more work, which people don't want to do. We are, I mean, there's a thing, apathy is a thing. We have to shake ourselves of that. So I bring behind the woodshed these things on how you how you approach it. You start. You have to go with baby steps too. Most of us don't have a clue. You think I got here? Uh, I do this stuff from from just opening up some, opening the Constitution yesterday. No, this is a big problem. No, no. That said, it's really simple to fix at some level. You just got to get people to understand that and stop being apathetic or fighting you to be apathetic or thinking that their opinion of uh, uh, of what is, is is more important or divorcing themselves from how we even got here. I mean, that, that one, how we haven't got here, I see so many people advocating for things that when you look back in history, you don't have to go that far to see. They failed. The, these these observations, it's like, what is it, the... I don't know all these people. I don't really follow them. The, the libertines, uh, the, the libertarians, the uh, anarchists, the, the, all the people in those, they, they offer suggestions on what's supposed to work. And I look back, all that's been tried and failed. Why do you, why did we learn that? Or, or is that a psyop? And I have a feeling, I actually believe it's more of a psyop. And it's not an inter it's an interesting psyop because the proponents of it could be very earnest in what they believe, but they've been they don't know they're misprogrammed. They didn't learn some certain basic things. And so I'm I'm not so happy to just jump in and embrace lots of anything. I put it now through the filters I've developed, through the things I've done that accomplished ever so slowly though, even so, accomplish prog processes that get us back to that law of the land which we requires this thing to work better. And I always, again, I've been to say, if you don't have a self-government, your organs don't mean uh, organized to you. Organ, organize, organization. That reflects out into a government of all of us helping ourselves when we're bad or we look, or the question of whether or not we are. I don't know what to say. I don't know how you go through to rationalize all your other things if you won't lay it down and put it down as something that works because it, you found that everything else fails, how you expect to continue? How do you expect to make a demand? We know bad is out there, and bad don't fix itself. And you can't fix that with all, all anybody's mind of how good you are and how good you intend the world to be will not fix that attack or that potential for attack. It's all law, it seems to be, uh, to me. And I'm not talking in the way that it's used as a, as a club to beat us uh, baby seals to death. I'm talking about how, it, it, from the perspective, again, of that law of the land, as it, it pertains to land. Those rights given to the historic peasants that now have rights against the king itself. And the rights to what? Just the land? No, it, it, all the appurtenances. Your right to possess, exclusive. Your right to use, exclusive. Again, you're not talking about trespassing other people. That's one of the issues that a bigger, a bigger group, uh, if you will, more, a neutral condition, a neutral jurisdiction would look at. So within your land, what do you have? You have the right of possession, exclusive to everything, everyone else in the whole world. You have the right of use. You, you have the right of ingress and egress. You have the right, as they used to say, which is destroyed by the legal system today to the center of the uh, center of the earth 
as a kid, I never understood that. It was fascinating to me. I never understood how do you get to the center of the earth. But anyway, you have those rights pertinent to what you possess. And if you will not assert the limit how uh, that's, that's granted into that, how do you respect yourself and how do you respect others when you allow them to beat you down and then you just complain? I don't quite get that. That you have someone that's a criminal against you, that's another problem. It's still a problem, but it's, the analysis is a little bit easier. They just didn't have a right. They're just a criminal. And again, that black and white pressed before someone who's neutral for everyone, for everyone's good, was the, the idea of what we call government that's gone wrong. We now have a private institution uh, that's now an agency of all the governments called the Bar Association, and they do what they do. They're not your local domestic law. They're a foreign corporation that domesticated itself, uh, um, arguably, through the law. And that part is important to understand because if they can show they did it through the law correctly, they might actually have an international claim for the right of being an occupier in your land. I don't know. I myself, looking at it, don't agree that it was done by the law. It was done by a hook and crook behind the doors, if you will. It was, in a way, actually the Jekyll, the one I'm looking, I know about, it was actually more like the Jekyll, uh, Jekyll Island thing. The Jekyll Island thing is a, is a myth. That actually didn't happen relative to to the law of the Federal Reserve, but this act and the we uh, we late hours of uh, December December sometime right at before the end of the legislature, it was passed like in the dark of night to to cause this foreign to domesticate a foreign corporation to overthrow the permit laws of the people. How many people know this stuff? If you don't know this stuff, you don't even know the terrain you're standing in. When you do know this stuff, it it absolutely corrects and, and re, reorients everything that's going on. Now, I keep telling you, look at this international law. Why I was standing before Benedict Van Edermo, when I started getting into the law involved in this decades ago, I cannot tell you. But there I was in a foreign university library, reading, standing in front of this encyclopedia, and it has become, over time, the most valuable insight I can, put, I can tell you. You say, why international law? Well, it is. It's only a bunch of rules. But you know what? All the nations do follow it. It's this encyclopedia. Uh, Benedict on Amalty is an encyclopedia of how the world functions around itself. And they adopt those premises. When you have a foreign cor an international foreign corporation or an offshore corporation coming in, they bring those things in. And they comply. If you look carefully, they comply with all that. Why would they comply with that if it didn't exist? Why would they, if there's no limit, why would they comply with anything more than just coming in and taking your place down? This is the, also the myth of civilization. That said, it's the only myth we have to show where someone violates us. If we don't have that rule, then we don't, we can't blame somebody. That's all law is. It's when things go bad. We can demarcate what bad is. Otherwise, it has no, it has no quality. And so what bad is? What are our uh, failure to assert? Uh, again, I'll finally get back to this, and maybe that's all I'll be able to talk about today, was this journalist thing. We think there's a constitution, this and that, and the other. I've told you, when things stop functioning under a constitution, you better take a step back and consider maybe it doesn't exist, or it doesn't, it's not in force and effect in there, you know, or any other potential that comes to mind. And you have to sit back and rethink of in, that, in that thought train, if you will, that thought pattern. That, because that's the, that's a jurisdictional reality for that point. You can't think of what you think is going on. So I was, I wanted to investigate this journalist thing. Why? Not because I'm interested in, in what a journalist does crossing the border. I'm interested in the military that sits there that pe he doesn't recognize on how they treat people that is expanding across the nation and across the world. So we're back to this international sense again, and the border is really the main is a main uh, concept re relative to international law and rules and customs and traditions and th these things. So let me go back and remind you, talking about a journalist who knew they were, he was under scrutiny, coming from the Intercept, no less. There, there, what? Uh, Glenn, Glenn Green, Greenwald was already be attacked. His, his boyfriend got attacked uh, with these people, these uh, border agents. They know this is here. So I, I, my first, uh, I'm looking at this with a question mark. Why is this even a story if they knew all this? And this is a part of our problem. 
Part of the problem is, is we'll look at this stuff and we will disregard it. We're apathetic even to protect ourselves, and that's what I'm looking at here. How could we look at this and be told and be uh, have a discussion, at least an airing out of what could be done better? And as I say, that's uh, sound mind. Thank you for for what you do again and and uh, and simulcasting this uh, with your production and the and the chat the chat area over there. I don't get a chance to get over this week. I couldn't even move over there, but there was a um, I did. When I I saw that you had done that, done the. I was more concerned about the failure and see how much you caught. But I did notice a, a condition where you were telling people that you, you're listening to the broadcast for years after you had gone through the this very well very condition. The second time you had to go through, you did wipe your phone or you did something to the phone. I just wanted to acknowledge that. See, folks, there's things you can do, and I understand if I got your comment correctly. Uh, that they didn't, the uh, the border agents did not like this. And why would they, right? You're taking away their information. The point is, with proper planning and, and understanding and knowing the condition, you will act and respond different. And hopefully, with again, is that that even though there's no line where national security is prevalent, there is a line, and it's how you respond to it. And this is another analysis that we're looking at a journalist who knew what was going on. Who knew things should be different? Who walked, who prepared, who made him get himself into a, a vulnerable state, and then went through and started making questionable, if not bad, decisions? He didn't like it, so I, I would have to say for him, it didn't turn out as well as you know he was thinking. And so we're kind of do, looking at that. Why is anybody going to go through border patrol? Well, maybe lots of you won't, but that's this is just the next cop who interferes with you. This might be some code official that uh, interferes with you. The subject matter is the only thing that changes. They're all, they're all, uh, my belief, if I don't have a proof of it, my belief, because it's so consistent, all these, all these uh, agents learn the same style of uh, psychology, attack, questions, answers, uh, uh, all the different types of things, like, you know, the auditors will go out and, and they get themselves locked into a certain set of questions. They learn those. those people, cops aren't stupid. They may have low IQ, but they're not stupid. So you figure that one out. Why? Because they're told how to do this. Judges are told how to how to deal with people. And so you have to listen when the instructors of the military are telling their soldiers how to deal with you. You have to learn that's how you're going to dealt with. You have to be fluid and stay away from those areas. When they start dismissing a line of questions, you have to find new questions. When they make blanket statements of authority, you have to bring again the black and white. Is that black and is the is the demarcation? It does doing that, uh, having that stuff in your mind, and then being able to restate it, or having a piece of paper and pointing to it. It's very powerful for a lot of reasons. Not just that you line them back into the law, is that you're only speaking in the law. You don't incriminate yourself. You're actually making a notice to see if they're going to be intending to their next action will harm it. You're actually only working within the black and white. Anyway, the limitation. If you toss all of that out, you have nothing. You have nothing. There's nothing to rely on. And and that said, that's this black and white over time has shown to work better over time than without it. And even for as bad as some of the newer stuff comes on us, to be that's just a bunch of people caucusocracy. That wasn't we weren't supposed to allow that either. But getting back to this, uh, in retrospect, this journalist writes after being now he's being brought in. Remember, he's under scrutiny. We've talked about last week. I won't recover too much of that. Uh, I was he says I was naive about the kind of agency CPB has become in the Trump area, and this is where we broke away. And I said, see, this is a problem. He went political. This problem, this kind of a problem, started in the PATIROT Act. So I don't even want to. I don't even want to name names. This is just the political parties burning uh, the Americans uh, from either end of the candle they burn from political the political directions. This was set up long before Trump. But this article becomes politically focused, and that's a, you have to identify that and throw that part out. It's just, I was di disappointed to watch this guy go here because he's going to give an excuse that's going to interfere with how he thinks. The better question, it was naive about the kind of agency CPB has become, period. 
because that starts to nud what is they become when I do the analysis. What have they become? Well, they didn't exist <laughs> the way they are now. They're actually a restructured agency. At any rate, that's not even the focus here. How are you going to be treated? It's how you're going to be treated by every law enforcement, and it rolls right up into the judgeships and all this other stuff so-called. They call themselves judges and occupying force so, uh, officers. They're all officers as well. Uh, the soldiers, in this case, are officers. Remember, they're officers. We're not talking about just employees either. There's there, Those are there as well. We deal with those employees, non-soldier, non-officers, uh, with the agencies. So, what kind of a CPB has become? He doesn't really answer that, but we're going to find out. He mentions that he believes in his in his discussion what he thinks he's hearing. He calls pseudo. He doesn't really analyze. I'm, I'm going to jump past the past the paragraph. Excuse me. Uh, and we're going to read when I asked to comment on specific details in his story by this agent that he was asked for, and he wanted to re-inquire with CPB. The spokesperson, he responds, this journalist says, the spokesperson responded with a canned statement repeat, replete with sort of pseudo-military terminology that betrays the agency's sense of itself, not as a civil custom service, but as some kind of counterterrorism strike force. I'll let this, should I just let that rest, or do you hear the problem? He dismisses that they are a military force now. He can't put in his mind that this shift is that far, like I've been preparing you all. And if you don't do that, you keep, you're in denial. You can't understand that they appear to be a counterterrorism strike force. They are. He doesn't recognize that. That's going to cause you, to res you, when you get involved, to respond with your expectations rather than reality. So I wanted to kind of go through this if it was important for pe some people. To me, this is just, talk about the, again, the Border Patrol. This is any law enforcement or someone who will listen to law enforcement. They are now counter-terrorism strike forces. What are we? As I've told you, the Patriot Act required and then the limitation removed, the black and white removed for, for crime, uh, for misdemeanors. Now it's everyone is what? Under the murder memo, we're, with evidence, we're told that we're enemy combatants. This is a counterterrorism strike force. He's in denial. And so he doesn't appreciate, and he's not even aware at this point. I'm telling you because I want you to be aware. Whether you want to agree with me or not, that's, you're going to be, one day you'll see. You'll see. And you're either going to understand at that moment and your mind will kick in gear and everything I've told you will start to function and you'll be, you'll, the shield start to come up and you'll be able to kind of slip a bit through. But you'll see. This is this is the thing. You're, you're gonna have to. Everyone has to go through their exper own experience on this. I, I don't see this type of thing anywhere. Anytime you deal with a government in a law enforcement capacity, you're gonna find this stuff. What have we talked about? Even the sheriff. They have a military command structure. They use military time. They use military codes. But unless they then they got smart and started to use a less military code for how they communicate. You know them when you see them, folks. They're in uniforms. In fact, they, in the uniform, that then you knows them when you sees them. That's that's Libra code, folks. That's the law. The statute says you live in a military consequence. People don't recognize this. So this guy still, to this day, doesn't understand it, and he's the one on the front lines. He's the journalist uh, uh, reporting on the Palestinians gets shot, doesn't understand what's going on. It's global, folks. Now, Customs Service was some kind of counterterrorism force. He's, he, of course, yes, folks, they're military. National security, that's what you're dealing with. CPB is the quote here from the statement. CPB has adapted and adjusted our actions to align with current threat information, which is based on intelligence. As the threat landscape changes, so does CP, CBP. Excuse me, I've been saying that wrong. The journalist writes, the agency declined to put me in touch with Monsevius. Remember, that's the officer who moves him into secondary, uh, re, uh, secondary search. And the other officer's name in this account, or to make an official available for an interview. But a CBP source mentioned that, quote, the port director had reviewed the tape of the encounter. Now listen for all this stuff. 
I found that interesting because I had specially asked Monsevius and the other officers if, if it was being videotaped and recorded, and they categorically denied it. Okay, so now you know there's a tape. You need to file your paper to get that if they'll give it to you. A, a, a paper of, of disclosure for the evidence. What? Not not on on the criminal side. You do it on the on preserving the evidence for suit. He can't do that here because he didn't prepare it right, and I haven't got to that yet. I talked to you before about it, but he can't quite do it there. But now he knows they'll lie to him. So where are you? Are you in an honest environment that they'll deny, lie that they're recording you? So he can no longer. He's got enough evidence here, and everybody does. You can no longer believe you're dealing with an honest government. So where are you? There's no accountability. Where are you? You, you better tune your mind up a little bit here. Again, we're talking hindsight, 2020, armchair. I can do all that, but I'm trying to do it ahead of time to tell you maybe your experience may not be different, but you're going to come out with a different style record. You're going to be able to start doing things, and I think when you start doing that up front, that starts to warn them off just a bit. Just a bit. So they deny that they lie. Okay, so where are you? What's your expectation? You think you can talk to these people that are liars, that have a pre-planned thing that they call you call pseudo-military, but you find out are in fact military? No. The intelligence should have told you. What intelligence did they gather that put you in that place? That would have been a question. But see, the problem here, this journalist who knew he was underneath the scrutiny, and we all are, for those of us that will be doing this, and this is anywhere, this is especially for us to travel down the road, you need to gear up if you intend to reassert the line that there is against this intrusion on your right of ingress and egress, a pertinent your property rights that shall not be transgressed, and no court of any state has the right to interfere with that grant of Congress. That's the vested right to you is granted through your assigned status and acknowledged in the enabling acts of the state, a treaty, a domestic treaty that cannot be changed by either party, outside of your hands for sure, certainly out of the hands of the parties, to you. And no one ever asserts this stuff. And then you tie that to a, the unwarranted right to do what they do under color, that's a felony coercion and conversion, if you get that established in a real short order. But see, none of that record's made up by this journalist who knew he was under the gun, and vulnerable. Didn't eat, didn't prepare himself, didn't, had all his electronics available. And now he's telling us what kind of a world you live in when you live in the United States. Are you going to disregard it? That's why I find this article absolutely important. It's evidence of a reality. And all, I, all you were supposed to, y'all are supposed to, deal with the CBP if, if you can, I might have to go through the TSA. On the administrative side first, as I've been telling you. Why? Because that's the authority at the federal side. That's what they've said through the courts. You're not going to go in and change that and say, well, there's a constitutional right I have to the Fifth Amendment or Fourth Amendment. It's not in there anymore. It's now in the administrative part. And those are dealing with certain statuses as well, which is the very first thing you're going to attack. Not to get the intelligence, you're a person subject. Person and subject, two things, two statuses. I hope I'm not talking too fast. This is how the analysis starts to get done. But you don't do it with the Otmon Sevius while you're standing in line two. You just start establishing the facts of the violations. What you should have done and went to the administrative side and said, I see this story here. Where did you get, relative to me, the ability to pull me aside at all? You have to have a more statement there. I can't go through what I need to tell you here more, and I don't want to hand you a loaded gun either. It's not the only question. You set that up. It only takes a couple of questions, but you set up how you get there. Uh, going to here to read some more. So you're dealing with people that are lying to you with the CPB, with the TSA. And they'll lie to you about that. So when do you take responsibility? I mean, I don't know what the guy's going, what's going through this guy's mind, but he's admitted he's got low, he thinks he's got low blood, blood sugar. I guess you can tell that. 
I guess you can tell at least you're under the gun. You're under the your capacity, right? You get lightheaded, dizzy. Well, maybe I'm listening to crickets. I got memory fatigue. Oh, I've been listening to too many crickets, folks. We pass through a detention area harshly illuminated by fluorescent lights uh, where, where CBP officers in dark uniforms outnumbered the few tired-looking travelers. See, all these people are doing this harm to themselves. The officers all had home, homeland security patches on their shoulders and pistols on their belts. They're all officers, folks. That's the military. Am I, again, just add, just look at what, here's the evidence. you got to assess this as you're walking in. If you're on a land and, a, and an officer showed up with a, a pistol on his side, he's likely a military, what, a lieutenant? Is that the first level of military? He's at least that level. What is that? Any you guys who've been in the military know someone with a gun on their hip. You know them when you see them. Where do I get that? That's Libra code, the number one section in Libra code. Mosevia well, sat me down at a side desk with two chairs and a microscope on a filing cabinet. He left the door open. The bespectacled supervisor named Lopez made an appearance. In a polite back and forth, I was told that I was not under arrest or suspected of any crime and my citizenship was not in doubt, but if I didn't answer the question asked by the incident officer, I wouldn't be allowed into the United States, which I later learned was an empty threat, as CPB cannot exclude American citizens from entering the country. Lopez handed me some brochures and left the room. Now, what have I been saying? If you set up your record as you're walking in and discussing this, and you let them know that they, that's not even an empty threat. That's a felony, is actually. You set that up, see? You set that up. You go ahead, you take this as lotus that you're dealing not with an incident off. Something has happened. And they did it without due process. Now you've got them under the color of authority doing felonies. And you know so-called American citizens. I'd be very careful with that term. I'd go find the correct one. You assert, how do they not have ever, where is their intelligence say you're other than the excluded party? That's your question. Because I'm just looking right here at what I would do now that I see this. Yeah, I wouldn't know this before until I'm reading it. This is intelligence to us. What I said I wanted to, to tell you about it. This is the same question I'd ask anybody. How am I not the excluded property? I'm not the excluded man. Where's your intelligence that says that, that I'm not? If you see how easy it is to start getting this guy, they will impose to get you to buy into their authority. Your job, if you wish, your mission, if you wish to take it against the military offensive, is to assert the bright line, the black and white. He learns after the fact it's an empty threat. Why didn't he know that going in? You know that today now. I knew that. That's my point about the questions you set up. This into. I don't gear up to go in and, and, and get an inter and have to engage these. I try to walk through quietly. Whatever tricks you have in your mind to walk through, you uh, quietly. You try that. But as soon as it's turning, you better have a lot of this in your mind. That's all I'm asking people anymore. Just have this reality in your mind and don't stand there vulnerable. When in fact it was an empty threat, that alone right there is just is a massive key for all y'all. Not not because you know it. I mean to use where is this intelligence that's actually making me subject that I couldn't just pass through? Did I do anything? Right? Because their statement is this intelligence gathering for threats. Where's the intelligence that said I was a threat? Or are you using the non-disclosure as a false warrant and you're committing felonies? You see how fast that works, folks? I make this, I'm making this stuff up, folks. But do you see how fast it works when you have the proper acknowledgement of what's going on? I'm not defeated by these people. I may be vulnerable, but i got a thought in my brain about how it's going to work now. And if it goes that way, I've got a different train of expectations. My expectations are they're going to produce for me what questions I, as an investigative reporter, are outlining, which questions define the line they're not supposed to cross. It's a totally different thought than walking in, well, there ought to be a constitution. 
I was naive. Folks, please read this story and think about what's going on now after you've heard me talk. There's more, tons more to say. I mean, it's, my mind's throwing tons off right now just because I keep looking over and I realize I, 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 time is going by. I'm not even to the end of this article. I want to finish it. I had so much more to say. Thank you, Grimner. <laughs> A bespeckled supervisor named Lopez uh, made an appearance. So now you're going to deal with the different people. A supervisor, now you transfer authority to him on the respondent superior status. You ask him the very same questions if they haven't been answered or even if they have been of the one that, that starts this process. Now I'm talking after you have not engaged the administrative side. If you have gained the administrative side, then that is in a question. See, you don't get an answer from that. That's in an administrative question. They don't have the authority to impose all this. If those of you that listen to me understand how this works, when you get an administrative engagement, they can't make, take action against you until they resolve it or give you remedy around it. Once they give you the, the answer, then you have to move through the next process, which would be typically an appeal, possibly an injunction. I don't know. Yes, they're going to make it, yes, they're going to make it difficult. They don't want the slaves to, uh, the free people to be feeling free that they're free. They want them to continue to be slaves. That's the point. That's how they keep you occupied. And so I'm hoping you're listening to what I'm saying here. It's just coming off the top of my head, how to address a condition where you just heard it's an empty threat. And this is the thing I know. I know walking in, these people are just going to be criminal. They don't have to be, is the point. And I don't expect them to be. But the reality is they likely are. And so as much as I may avoid and try to avoid and diminish what I might, you know, walk in and be all grandiose about how much I know, just try to get through quietly, I may be running into something like this. I know it's an empty threat. Now, at that point, this reminds me of my very first traffic ticket that I understood. I started to learn how to fight. When I learned, when I, wa when I started to see what there was to do, and I realized at the end I could not lose. Why? Because at the time, I was all papered up. Being all papered up, that is your bright line. I was all papered up. I could not lose this case. It turned that reality turned my whole perspective. I had nothing I could lose. I could test all kinds of things, and I did. This is what it tells me in here. See, I've picked that up. When I see that he admits and they admit it's an empty threat, I have nothing to lose. I can press the borders. I can press on the borders they think they're keeping me from. I can push on all these points without a threat without a harm. And if they do a harm, you're hearing from me how to set that up as a continuing felony. The way you have to do that is because they do have an immunity and they are underneath national security. But you show, once you show you're not the incident they've fabricated, you've thrown them out of their authority, haven't you? Now, that can't be the only thing. You could, in a law, you could do that. But you need a pile of this stuff. That's what I'm talking to you about, understanding the condition in order to push it forward that way. You get one pie, you get you saw one log of their violation after log, and you start building the pyre that's going to burn them eventually. And they start picking this up, I think, pretty quickly. I've never dealt with the, uh, the Border Patrol, but the cops, uh, the code people, pick it up pretty quickly. They try to da fancy pants dance around what you're saying, but you keep it on focus, on point, and pretty soon they're, they're um, walking away. Again, I was telling you about my friend and the agricultural cut, cut in the grass and they, they were going to get him from this big old felon going to be a fire uh, an arsonist uh, they walked away from him after their initial engagement when he told them what the exception to their authority was all right so this is a proven over and over how you go about doing this again please do not think this is a shield this is the only thing we can do in the face of a military operation uh, with a lot of officers, remember they said you're beat down as the as the as the citizens of the town they just overran. They got you put into a holding cell, and their officers outnumber you. That's where you're going to be. Uh, go ahead and bring your Second Amendment out now. Go ahead, go ahead. Especially when they've already laid out the occupiers laid out a way to go, avoid all that to begin with, and I've been telling you how that works. And I've given you a little bit of clue. If you get this thing into the administrative side, and they don't want to make an answer because you kept pressing them, then they can't really treat you like this either. That's another thing you throw on them at the time. 
They don't have authority. You tell them, well, you don't have authority to call me out of line until the agency, this, this case, this administrative case file is resolved, and you have no right to detain me. So they said up front that you weren't under arrest, right? So those of you who are doing auditing, you say, am I not free to go? And he says, no, but you're not going to be able to get in the United States. That's a hollow threat. That's your point in the auditing. So you hear the same thing right there, don't you? They want to do this administ so-called administrative investigative hold. That's why I'm telling you to defeat the investigation. What incident? What intelligence did you have that I'm an incident? What intelligence do you have that I'm subject and not an excluded, someone who's excluded from your authority? Right? It's two questions. You nail them. In my mind, now, was that going to stop a criminal? No, but that, you've already you've got them two steps back and up. You're not sitting there being naive and, and negligent and, and, and making excuses and trying to do small talk, are you? And my focus is not on, like, this guy Monsevious or his supervisor. My focus is on establishing the bright lines they know is there. What I find interesting, he says here, it's an empty threat. The CPB cannot... Is it a typo there? So, oh, yeah, he changed the type. Okay, so I don't know what I'm dealing with now. He's changed the order there. Okay, cannot exclude... A, and I haven't thought about what this is, but uh, it, it cannot exclude American citizens doesn't explain the authority why. And that's what's a defect here. And I think this is what I tell you about. Watch out the op, the, the psyops going on here as well. Why is the intercept also? Remember, remember they, this is the group that developed as an alternative media that got the Snowden files. The guy who starts it, of which is tied, I can't remember how he tried, tied through what eBay, starting eBay or some, something, has lots of money involved with the government in the backside. Eh, the backside, yeah. So, I don't know why they're not saying stuff, but I'm a little leery about what the purpose of this. I'm going to use it for my purpose. I'm going to tell you he doesn't hear explain, and he should have a good journalist explain this empty threat condition. So you would know. Oh, so he's handed some uh, the brochures. Monsevius was joined by Anglo officer named uh, Pomeroy, who had a shaved head and looked a little older. They stared at me expectantly. Well, I, why were they staring at me? They wouldn't be staring at me. They'd be answer, The other guy would be answering those same questions. The second older guy would walk away, I assume, uh, on the way this usually works. Or they would both walk away. To, they have to take some time to start thinking about it. Am I talking big and bad? No, I'm talking to you. I'm putting myself in this guy's shoes and saying, that would be the only thing left for me to do, and I'm just telling you what I would, at the, my thought about this right now, what I would be doing, and what my experience in doing that has fostered. Not like I'm some big bad dude. It's just that I'm sitting down, and I'm now under the gun. They're wanting me to testify myself. They're wanting me to capitulate my rights. And you just heard, he found out later, they don't have a right to hold you past their detaining. And what is that? For the, you guys, and I'm talking to the auditors, because this is a direct connection. What is that? They're investigating whether you're that incident. And I'm showing you how you write, you figure out the right questions ahead of time to remove that from their vocabulary and their purpose. Now it's done. See, I hear auditors that don't understand that, and so they keep asking the same, same repetitive question and getting the same answer. They don't break through that to say, to break down the fact of the lack of investigation, which is administrative hold. Right? So I hope you're pulling this together, how all what I'm saying is really consistent and integrated. One, like I said, the administrative case eliminates all that. If they don't, uh, they want to make a statement about the, the, that you, you know now that they're doing an investigation, you immediately ask them, what was your intelligence that, made, that determined I was other than the excluded party? What was your intelligence that said I'm an incident? What? Where? Disclose that to me. And if you don't, you're coming under color of authority to extort from me or coerce me, and those are felonies. And then I would add, maybe even add, I'd have to do some research, just for those of you that would be interested to go look. Well, you know, I've seen you all y'all that uh, kind of know what the, you're looking at. You cite this stuff, but you don't understand how to put it in, in, in practice. What was the, uh, the title uh, 18, uh, section 241s and 242s? Remember, there's an, ex there's an aggravated charge there if you do it on the highway. I would expand the ports as the highway, and I would put that aggravated 
aggravated charge on them verbally. You know, you're subject to this criminal statute here. And then I would throw another one. Now that I've told you there's this criminal statute, if you don't go tell a supervisor, hey, supervisor, come if I don't, here, I'm going to tell you too. You, you both are not going to be subject to 18 U.S.C. 4 and 3, misprison and felony, if you don't do something to stop this crime. I'm telling you folks what's coming from my mind, sitting and pretending I'm in that condition, what I would be telling these people. Does that sound naive to you? Does it sound like I'm just blowing steam? I'm just citing black and white, the limit, and I'm telling them they can ignore it. I'm not saying they're not going to ignore it. They have their own volition. They have their choice. But I am asserting what? The black and white, the limit that they're violating. It, now, especially since I know they can't actually hold me. And they did say the word detain, isn't it? You auditors know about this. So I'm speaking right to you as well. Every day in your life. And this is not the game. This is not something that you play around with. Well, like I was saying earlier, you have a right. You know, I see some of you guys walking around in the videos, and I don't look at them too much lately, but I've seen it, so I don't need to see more. You walk around with your gun. You have a right. Okay, you want to make a point. Okay. That's the same right I said that that guy bearing arms that was asleep between two houses had. You need to make that a policy so that you don't have to keep going out there to prove you have a right to bear arms and be this this in, legal intellect on your mind against ignorant cops. Maybe you should go into your city hall and make a policy. The right to bear arms allows everyone without question to walk on the streets openly. Openly carrying if that's what your state is. Why do you play this other game and waste a lot of time? Just to prove something that the system is when you go away, they won't care. Make it something. Uh, here, uh, just pointing out, same is the same thing to me in this case, actually, the more I think about this. So they give you some, some brochures. They just told you you're detained. He's guy's not, not saying anything. What he says is this. Fine, I said. For the last six months, I've been doing an investigative journalism project to determine which restaurant has been the best guacamole in all of Mexico. See, being flippant. Right? Why wasn't he doing investigative journalism on that very encounter right there and switch the dynamic to their violation instead of keeping in the con their control and answering their question? See, he's dealing from a place of vulnerability in his mind. He's making questions up. He walked in there being weak. He didn't walk in there. I don't know. I guess uh, you can take candies if you can take candies to get your mind stimulated a bit. Why don't you have some with you? Why are you there in the first place? I keep, my mind keeps going. Why are we talking about this? Why do people put themselves into it? And then I get a little feedback from Sound Minds uh, chat. Uh, Sound Minds, they, they did, he did that, or the group that they did. They worked that out. They didn't have anything on their phones. Kind of perturbed the uh, border guards a bit. You think? Yeah. Pretty simple. But no, this guy tells him, gives him an answer, right? Confesses into something. Now they got him. Monsevius didn't miss a beat. And what restaurant is that? And he goes through and tells him. Now he, in, in retrospect, now this is something we can learn from this guy. I don't want to beat down on this guy too bad, but I mean, at some point, he's got this honesty about he realizes too late. And I'm saying we now have the benefit of that. However, there's a lot more if we intend to re keep this place the way it was meant. We're going to need to know all this stuff ahead of time. And him being on the front line journalism, a war journalist, on the front line, he should have known this up front, especially since they got attacked before. See, you over at Sound Mind, you learned the second time, didn't you? That's, I guess, the point. We learned from him now today, so we don't have to do the second point, or we're more fortified. He now says and admits in the article, the flippancy would cost me. Now, why? Why? Because you confessed against yourself in a question and interrogation. You continue the interrogation, didn't you? You continue that intelligence gathering. You don't shut it off. I don't mean just because you say, oh, this is an interrogation that you don't have a right to. That's not how you do that. It's more to the fact of what intelligence did you have that says I was subject to this interrogation? How do, what intelligence do you have that, that I'm not the excluded party, the American? I'm focused on their, their requirements. I'm My pre-work, my pre-research was to study, and this is part of it, what are they going to want to know? I'm going to be able to defeat that initially. I started defeating everything that they need to know by, by showing there's nothing that they had to begin with. Again, what am I only saying? What am I really only promoting? I'm promoting you understand where due process actually starts. 
Where was the notice to you that you were subject anyway? That's another question I'd probably throw right on top of that. Where is the notice that you sent me that I was subject? So I could prepare to avoid this. So now you, you've taken my, my ability, my remedy against this. That's a violation of law. That's due process violation number three. If you get what I'm saying here, how fast you can start pulling this stuff together and counter how they come at you. No, this guy comes, as he understands now, after the fact, flippant. Uh, do not do that to yourself. Don't ever do that in your arrogance either. Like you, because you think you can recite black and white. Your black and white is simply the statement of the border of the line not to be crossed. It's not something to rely upon. The guy could just be a criminal in a, in a uniform. Okay, so don't take this like because you know this stuff. It means anything in the first instance. You always are subject to what they want to do, and that means it includes killing you. So his flippancy with telling him he's doing an investigative report on a restaurant, they already knew he was there beyond. They can travel, track him around. He was down in Mexico. Do you think you don't know what's going on? And so the officers uh, made it clear that it was going to be a long delay, right? But why? He's just admitted into the he's just admitted into the ability to be interrogated. He's given his consent. For those of you that look for that, that's where that's where it is again. If it wasn't in lots of other places in this report. When I saw how mad they were, I lost interest in the principle of the thing. In reality, I didn't care if they knew what the story was about. The draft was done, my editors had a copy, and all I cared about was getting home to a cup of coffee, a sandwich, a shower, and my bed. Yes, that was the true statement, but is that his what he needed to do at the time? Absolutely no. Not only did he go flip it, they responded to him, he capitulates, doesn't he? in an effort to smooth things over. They're lying to you, folks. How are you going to smooth things over? You realize that step by step he's walking himself into a bad condition. And we can see this in hindsight as he written, and I appreciate the, uh, as he written, I appreciate the writing, I appreciate the exposure, but you know you're walking into that. He's claiming he didn't, but he did. He did because he knows journalists are under the gun. He did because the courts have said if you're going to have a problem with with the border guards, you have to go through the TSA administrative. He knows all that. These people are not, this guy is not that dumb. And I just said that. My mind said, well, you we don't know that. And you're right. I'm, I'm talking to myself now, folks. Yeah, I know that. I, maybe he's not that dumb. He writes that he's that dumb. But he is with a group of people that aren't that dumb. And so now I wonder whether or not they're all that dumb. And again, this is just indicative of the crickets that we're talking to ourselves to give us a brain damage. Well, whether or not this is a psyop. So I don't want to get too deep in all that. I just want to use this as an, uh, the, uh, the education that it can give us for those of us that would, would tend to listen to it. Uh, I, to me, this is critical stuff. In a world where you can be shot because you're homeless and laying down between two cars or you're driving down to the store to get your uh, little one uh, an ice cream cone and some guy takes offense to be, because you looked at him as you traveled down the road and he happens to have a uniform and decides to shoot you and kill you, uh, and even your little one, I think this becomes really, really important. And until the day we can give the bright lines to stop all this military nonsense, whatever they call it, whatever they deny, they, maybe they'll, they'll never agree it's a military consequence. If you treat it like one, you'll be able to fix that one too, won't you? It won't matter. You don't talk about it. You just fix the military consequence. And that speaks to speaking to what? The national security imperative, which they called what? The incident, which Americans are supposed to be excluded from. If that's not a bright, quick path to to being asserting your rights again under a limitation. See, if that limitation wasn't there, you wouldn't have it. But it is. It's in that Constitution that they're actually working, even under the extreme necessities. And until you, I think people see, even within the extreme necessities, there's still avoidances. You're not understanding that there is a limit, and you won't exercise to that level, and you'll give up, and you'll call names to everybody, or you'll argue with them, or you'll, you'll look for another utopia. And you'll be the next people that will be standing in line in the second line, wherever you are, the cops that will be threatening you, or the SWAT comes down on you, you'll be that next guy eventually. You'll be the people that just pay the fees and taxes just to get them off your back. Instead of sitting down and methodically working through the condition and try and work to expose, like I've explained today in the subject matter of crossing the border, to everything that's a fee, a fine, a tax, an imposition, a regulation, everything is underneath what I'm saying today. 
Where do I continue? He just wants to take a shower. I get that. But all right, when you're in a military occupation, you're getting ready to go to the gulag, is that your most important consideration? I don't think so. And until you appreciate that point, then put yourself in that position. See, when you're in that, in that position, you're not going to be real arrogant either, are you? You really have to get understanding what the condition is here. So he thinks he got it done. He just wants to go back. So he apologized for his grouchiness, blaming it on stress of the tra travel. He's trying to rationalize with a, with a military officer, attempting to get him in trouble. Cooperation didn't earn me any leniency. See? You see how that works? I could just tell you. I didn't read the next paragraph. I have to roll up and scroll up. There it is. Cooperation didn't get leniency. It doesn't have to be cooperative, right? He's in an interrogation to, to perfect the incident that he's causing under national security. Next up was a thorough search of my suitcase, uh, down to the unscrewing of the tops of my toiletries. Uh, that much I expected. Oh. He expected all that. Why didn't he resolve that he didn't have to have it done in administrative side process, folks? You see how he's, he's twisting this. You, you all know this stuff's going to happen. You're obligated to go defeat it. So I'm telling you how you can start to have the process to stop this ahead of time, but even after the fact and you get into it, if you're understanding that's going to happen, then why are you, again, bringing yourself more, more, more vulnerable? Why didn't you say, wait a minute, what was your warrant to get in there? He, he said they're going to make it a long day. You're there, folks. You, you, you have nowhere to go anyway. To me, that's a lim you're, you have no limits to experiment with. Again, you don't piss them off. Well, they're not going to like what you're doing. But you don't give them the, the, the color of the authority to be angered. They can feign anger, but again, they know what they're dealing They know what they're not dealing with the, the laws. They're waiting to have you buy into their consensus, aren't they? So he expected that much going through the suitcase. Why? Why do you expect people to train you to go through your suitcase if you're actually an excluded, an excluded man or a woman? Why? But then a third officer, whose name is Villarreal, carefully read every page of my 219 journal, including copious notes of cell phone work, relationships, friends, family, and all sorts of private reflections. I had uh, happened to write down. And I told him, quote, Sir, I, don't, I know there's nothing I can stop, do to stop you, but I want to tell you, as one human being to another, that you're invading my privacy right now, and, don't, and I don't appreciate it. Villarreal acknowledged the statement and went back to reading. Why? Because he's a military officer looking for intelligence, and he's subject. He's also now resorted to human being, the rights of a human, an animal. That's foreign to the whole setup. Doesn't, isn't a man, an American man or woman, in this case a man, and he's not has not asserted that they have no right to invade. No, he's consented to every bit of it. And now he's trying to rationalize with a military officer who acknowledges his statement. That sounds pretty normal to me. Put yourself in the, in the officer's position. Reviewing a captive. Who believes he's a captive. The author goes on to say that was just the beginning. <laughs> Why not? The investigation is going to go all day, folks. The real abuse of power was the warrantless search of my phone and laptop, which SoundMinds already has an answer to. As I told you last week, I never understood this before. I've told you a long, long time ago why we do this to ourselves, I don't know. I, I told you I'd even put my mind toward actually doing something that would mess with them. I'd put something on the computer that when they got into it, they had to deal with it. Why, why not? I'm going to be there all day. I have some humor from it, right? See how long it takes them to figure out they got, they got snookered. Anyway, this is part of the effect of a, this is the part that affects everyone, not just reporters and people who keep journals. Folks, I've been telling you this whole report uh, that this affects everyone. Okay, this whole report. He doesn't. He now comes to tell you that this is now for you. He wants to make it important to you. I've been saying all this has always been important to you. He's just now figuring all this stuff. Now he wants to explain some of the law. He never used the law before, but now he's going to, re going to reflect some of the Supreme Court decision. In general, law enforcement agents have to get a warrant to search your electronic devices. The question then is, do they have to do so underneath military imperative of necessity for security of the nation? Now he goes on to write, uh, that's the gist of the 2014 Supreme Court Riley uh, case, Riley versus California. But the Riley uh, ruling only applies when the police arrest you. 
The Supreme Court has not yet decided whether the same protections apply to citizens re-entering the United States from abroad, and federal appeals courts have issued contradictory opinions. Maybe that's because of the record that's made by the one who stopped who should be excluded, do you think? Maybe people are, con are, are violating themselves, and then they go to attorneys who either don't understand this or haven't been trained, or uh, who want this problem, who are helping to bring on the military, right? The Supreme Court, if you haven't noticed it, will get it wrong. The courts will get it wrong all the time. The district courts have no authority. Where's the federal territory over which a federal territorial court has jurisdiction? Why wouldn't that be Article 3 if it was the land under the Constitution? Which means only two courts have jurisdiction. What am I saying? Is that my opinion? No, that's in the statutes. And a few of you have read that, studied that, and know that. Why can't I get people like uh, Julian Assange and Kim.com and uh, who, uh, Snowden, any of these people, to make that challenge as a quo warranto to pull that out? Why can't I get them to do that? For those of you that have read this, you, you might be shaking your head. Yeah, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't they make that simple little challenge? Yeah? So there's a limit. If there's a limit, then how can it, if there wasn't a limit, how can the, the, we now find out that Americans can be excluded? Why, where's that limit? Where's it written? He doesn't say. Well, maybe he'll get to it. I didn't get to I don't remember now. But So he goes off to talk about the distinctions. And I'm looking at this thing. Well, they know, the record probably wasn't established that shows how the CBP uh, got it wrong by their own rules. Why? Because you established an administrative case that had to deal with all the things showing that you had been excluded and the imposition of the liability was a crime against you. Anyway, so uh, so uh, CPB goes by its own rules. Yes, you start with the rule. That's the administrative five side, but he's doing it after the fact, right? Doing it after the fact. The agency may uh, use internal equipment to crack the passcode. Well, he's well beyond the application against him, isn't he? That only applies, this rule only applies after he agrees that he's someone that's subject to this imposition. This is, and there's one other name that just popped in my mind, Larkin Rose. This is Larkin Rose's problem with his case. He tried to go inside the rules to argue that it didn't apply to him instead of doing the due process that was supposed to happen. He didn't challenge the person subject, a uh, person liable, up front in the administrative side. So that that's Larkin Rose. So then because he got beat down, and, and they, they beat him down, I have no doubt about that. He took the, it's, part of what he says is prop, all proper, but he didn't take what I can see to have been the more proper route. He took a route that was being established by so-called patriots of the day, and they had it wrong. They had it wrong, folks. They didn't go by the due process thing either. But just what I've been talking to you about most all day today. This is the same condition. You agree to argue whether their rules apply to you after you've agreed that the rules apply by saying they don't apply. That's not an argument. I see somebody else. Who was it? Someone else has said, oh, the, I, I, don't know to, I don't have to pay tax. That's not how you, how you bring that forward. I owe no tax. The, the question is, how did they come up with the rule, the due process to see that you were the person liable for a tax? That's the start of it. At any rate, a total different thing. So he's already caused a problem. He'll read the rule, you'll see the rule, but he's already, you have to understand you've consented that the rule applies to look at your stuff, and I'm saying you have to make a record that shows that you're not the one to be interrogated. And if you get that point, you see how far down the trail of, of, of uh, incrimination you have gone. Before you, you were supposed to assert the right, the board, the line, the border for the sta, the border of the border guards. I, mean, I, I keep reading it's just more of the discussion. Now people, more people come in, talk about warrantless searches, and now the whole article is off the point. You can go through all that, but you, were you subject in the beginning? Did you allow yourself to be subject? If you apply the rule, the agency gets deference. Where is the attorney to tell everybody this? If they get deference, you have no case. 
you have no argument. Why? Because they give you opportunity through the com comments period that you've heard me talk about. It's so important. And what actually has to start happening, if we're to, and I haven't looked into that, but it seems to me it comes to mind, you have to go in and say that your, your people are violating people that are excluded. And here's a rule set that they have to follow that allows the excluded people to get through without this uh, otherwise crime being perpetrated without remedy. How about if someone step up and do that? There's an administrative process for that. How about if someone take that and prove this, uh, show this up, and go through the administrative process to show that you've exhausted your administrative things and they won't remedy it, then you go to court to declare that violation and enjoin them against you and others similarly situated. Can I get anybody to try that? Anybody to think of it that way? You can actually apply this to other things, whether you ever go to court, because they're like, oh, we can't go to court. In an injunction, you got a, they got a problem. The government has a problem when you do an injunction. Yeah, I've explained how that all works. And so we go to the attorney, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. After the fact of agreeing you're subject to all this, uh, which uh, has sued CBP over its warrantless devices, told me that the agency, quote, has for sure said no as, they, as whether there is a right to counsel during secondary screening. Quote, they're pretty... They've been pretty consistent. You don't get a lawyer. A lot of people have tried to push back, particularly after the Muslim ban. People were like, I have a green card, and you're putting me back on a plane to Iran. I need a lawyer to come, to come down, uh, to, come down uh, to the airport. And you don't get all that. Why? Because you're in a military detention center. You were supposed to work this out before you got there or been able to defeat that authority before you got to that point. And no, you don't get an, a representative of a council of law that was uh, supposed to be in you in the first instance if you didn't get that connection. This is strict liability now. Anyway, uh, I, I could go. There's more to say. I don't. One failure after the after the next. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to the rest of it. The secondary inspection environment is inherently coercive. Inherently coercive, inherently criminal, if you establish that they didn't have a right. Do you see how that works really quickly? Do you think anybody's argued, or do you have an attorney that says, well, the, F, the CP, CBP has been pretty consistent in this? Doesn't say how you were supposed to set up this thing before. No, they just set inside the defense that they've established for you, which is the setup for the takedown. I hope that's pretty clear to you all. It is on you. It's always been on you. These attorneys will not do what they are required to do in, in the most basic sense. And I'm just talking, you want to say that there's a, a no constitution, I'm talking there's a limit through due process. You didn't affect it. You didn't take it up, and you didn't become the investigative reporter to make the re record outside of their intelligence to show that it was either faulty or set up to cause a crime a problem in you. That's a different style felony. Then get everybody involved is like a RICO thing. You see how that starts to develop, but that's way too much beyond today. Think about what I've been saying. Apply this to your daily actions. I didn't get too far down the tabs again. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, sorry for the breakdowns. I had another one uh, late. I got it back hooked up. I don't know the, uh, why that's happening. I'll have to look into that. But uh, you'll have a tape, uh, excuse me, a file I'll upload uh, after uh, after a couple of hours, uh, and it'll be the whole 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 truth and nothing but the truth there as I stated it. And you'll forever uh, recognize on, on the file. So, uh, Jules at UCY.TV, thank you for what you do at the re, re upping the broadcast on your on your YouTube site and sound minds and normal normalization of ignorance. Appreciate it. Uh, everyone, uh, do as you can, folks. You're not going to stop this oppression. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
a can of whoop-ass, feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 